Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome again to this morning's study. We just have this week, we have uh, the study this morning, and we're going to finish this off tomorrow morning um, and try to finish off uh, these lines of Samson. And then, of course, uh, Stephen and I are going to be working on, on notes, uh, Iran and Dwight, but are going to be doing notes as well. But the notes that Stephen and I are doing are related to um, uh, the book of Judges. And he's a, Stephen, of course, is going to be doing lots of other chronology as well. Uh, anyway, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the time that we have to open your word together, and we invite your spirit to speak to us. We know, Lord, we are sinners in need of you. We are dependent upon you for all things, and um, we know, Lord, that you are working mightily through your spirit upon the hearts of those uh, around us, those that have heard this message, and those that are searching for truth. And we just pray, Lord, that you can lead us uh, to truth so that we can see Jesus, we can behold him and become changed. Give us wisdom as we continue to look at the line of Samson. Help us to understand these truths, and we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> okay, so a number of things. Yesterday we talked about uh, the fact that we could take the story of Samson and and we could see, and, and this is what we're going to do tomorrow, uh, I think, is we'll just we'll just lay out all of the, the, the four chapters that deal with Samson on a line itself. But today I didn't want to do that. I wanted to uh, tie up some loose ends, and I wanted to uh, focus on the line that we talked about dealing with Samson and Delilah. And in this line, so we're going to end up drawing this out. So this is going to be a new line. And let me see, where should I? Okay. So what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal this, the line of Manoa. So you'll see what I mean. You can't see it right now. Um, So, so when we look at Samson, we know that Samson is this Hebrew number. Um, he's the Hebrew number there, as you can see, eight one two three. Now, um, his name means sunshine. And his he Hebrew number eight one two three. And it was interesting that the name Samson 8123 related to um, uh, this. Um, let me see here I'm on the wrong computer. Uh, Sorek. So Sorek is 7796, but um, it's the exact same word is also the Hebrew number 8321. So, um, so this ties Samson and Delilah together. She's from the Valley of Sorek. And so we have this, this strange word that has two different Hebrew numbers in the Strong's Dictionary. It's the same word, spelt the same. Um, uh, the one will show different spellings of it, but basically it's it's just the same word, right? To me, that's kind of inexplicable. And um, so I'm going to go over here. I'll let you look at what I'm doing on the PowerPoint. <clears throat> so I'm going to get rid of all this stuff. This, so we got this 8, 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to put that maybe up here. And, and then we're going to have Delilah. Right. And oh, Samson spelled wrong. Um, oh, and the other thing I should do with Samson, 
uh, is uh, note that his his sum is eighty one, and the reverse sum is eighty one, and <clears throat> in this story as well, um, the story of Samson, we have this. Uh, the Hebrew number 8181, which um, is part of this story. Let me get here quick. So the Hebrew number 8181 relates to Samson's hair, and that's going to be in verse... Um, that's when his hair grows. So that's going to be in Judges 16.22. So I'll put that in there. Okay. All right, so we got that. And then Delilah is 1807, is the Hebrew number. And of course, we can see how that relates to July 18 as a symbol. And she's from Sorek. So, uh, uh, so Sorek is um, Hebrew 7796 and Hebrew 8. Three, two, one. Right. So we have this number. Uh, and it still, kind of amazes me that you have uh, such disparate numbers representing the exact same spelling of a word in Strong's dictionary. So I have no reason. I, I could not figure out why he did that, but but it's there, and so we take this as a symbol. Now the line below is uh, not the line we're doing. Right. I just borrowed this. Um, uh, from the line of Manoa. So here we have then, uh, we had done a calculation where we had taken uh, 8, 3, 2, 1, and we subtracted 7, 7, 9, 6, and we got this 525. So, so I'm just going to put here the difference is 525. between these two uh, Hebrew numbers for Sark. So some very interesting symbolism. Uh, I mean, Delilah, we could put two here. It means, um, say, feeble. Sure. It's not how you spell feeble. It needs two E's. There we go. <clears throat> And, and this story of Samson Delilah is going to be a waymark on the whole line of Samson. So this is what we decided, maybe I decided yesterday, that the story of Samson actually has seven waymarks in it. And this is one of the waymarks in that line. And, and it would actually be um, the second angel empowered. Um, so that is uh, the story of Samson and the prostitute is going to be the second angel formalized. It's going to be symbol of midnight. We can see that in that story. So we're going to look at that tomorrow. And then we can see that this story here is uh, the way mark of the second angel empowered. But the other thing about it is it's also a line in and of itself. So every way mark can be a line. And this is a line where we see in the story of Delilah, these four events, these four, I don't know what you call them. Maybe you could call them tests. Um, and it's a three, one combination. So that's what we're going to draw out here. So we're going to say that this first test is, um, 
let me see. I guess I'll do this at the bottom. Okay. You know, I got all these other things that we're going to have to change. So what's the first test? What does, when she entices Samson and she she's going, it's, it's going to be which test? We'll do it to the seven widths, right? And then we're going to have a second one. What's the second one? You guys can put to the draw here. So we're going to put this one here. Um, second one. New ropes. The new ropes. And then we're going to have the third one. You should remember these. This one's the funniest. Which he weaves his hair. So I guess it's the seven locks of his hair. Yeah. So the seven locks um, in, uh, what do you call that? You know, it's got the wharf, the whoop. It's a weaving weaving machine. What's what's that called? Is there a name for it? it seems to me there's a name. A loom. That's it. Uh, in the loom. So seven locks in the loom. And then we're going to have this one where Samson's hair is cut. So we'll just say his hair is cut. So his hair is cut. Now, the thing about this as a three one combination um, is that um, we see, you know, clearly the fourth is different, and this is common in the three one combination. Um, now, the fourth then is this fourth angel arriving, and, and we haven't put dates to these, those dates above don't mean anything yet, um, though we'll see how at least I think they should be, and, and you can have input into that. Um, so we're going to have these uh, these way marks, and, and in that story, we should be able to see the arrival, formalization, and empowerment of the first, the arrival, formalization, and empowerment of the second. Um, yeah, I did see your your comments, Angela, on my phone, but I couldn't read them because I had the wrong glasses on. So Angela just asked if I'd seen the comments in the 2520 study group. Um, so so she commented on yesterday's video. Um, so I'd... Um, was it yesterday's or the day before? I don't see the comments here. Hmm. For some reason, I don't see the comments on my computer. I'm not sure why. Was it yesterday's video, video Angela? Uh, yes, it was. I hope I remember to press send. <laughs> I, I did see and the comment. Yeah, have... I did see the comment, oh. but I can't see it hmm. now. So, so I'm looking at my other groups, but you said it was in the 2520 study group. Yeah. And... I don't see the comments, so I have no idea. So what did you say? <laughs> I know you were talking about um, 
Something to do with Samson. Do you remember? I was comparing it to, to, to Ezekiel 8.3, and then I was commenting on the 83 and the 81 midnight. Yeah, okay. Uh, so 8, yeah, 3, and, 2, 1, there's midnight. Right, so it was the midnight. So remember. Yeah, so there's a connection there with midnight that we saw. Um, and that's going to be in the story of... Uh, the first part of Samson uh, dealing with the harlot, the part dealing with the harlots, the first part of chapter 16, first three verses. And that's really going to have the symbols of midnight there. And I'm saying that, that this section is in that whole line of Samson, the midnight cry. But in and of itself, it is a line. So, um, so we have these symbols. Now, uh, one of the things we normally do with with like the symbol here, we have this difference uh, between the two Sorex. So we're going to say that this is um, addressing primarily uh, the story of Samson and Delilah is it's dealing with the 525. So the 525 goes from July 18 to um, uh, December 25th, 2021. Now, it is possible we could take this whole story and have this line represent um, from July 18th to December 25th, 2021, if that makes sense. So that's just a suggestion. So just taking that symbol of the 525, we would start this line um, over here with... Um, July 18, 2020, right? And instead of, uh, so it's it's a much shorter span of time. And we put 25, 25 days. So, so we're going to try this. I haven't even uh, tried this at all. I haven't seen how it works. It might not work. Um. So if we put the 525 days, we're going to say that that is the span of time. So obviously these dates in between wouldn't apply. And then we have to figure out if this is the midnight cry in the line of Samson, that midnight cry in the line of Samson is zooming into a way mark on that line of Samson, which we haven't drawn out yet. So, so we don't have the way marks. We, we haven't marked but which way mark is the second angel arriving in that line of Samson? We haven't marked what date it is. So it's going to be a date. But So I'm kind of doing things backwards, but because we could have drawn up that line first and then addressed this. But I wanted to address this just because I thought it was a little simpler. And um, uh, so it should, it should, it should work up. So we have because of that Sorek. Now uh, the Valley of Sorek now, that has to do with um, uh, these um, Sorek is, is dealing with the, the vines or the choice vines, right? So the word Sorek means choice vines. Now I'm not sure what that particularly, that meaning of that word addresses, but, but that's what it means. And so, you know, we have to consider it. Right. So somehow the Soric, but it gives this this symbol of 525. And, and I can't think that that's a coincidence, right, that there's this word which inexplicably has two different Hebrew numbers in Strong's concordance. And the difference is 525 days and based on everything or 525, which could represent the 525 days. And based on everything that we've been doing and understanding the lines, it's most logical to say that this line that we're addressing with Samson and Delilah is this period of 525 days. Now, we haven't decided what the darkness is and what these tests are. But these tests, the widths, the new ropes, the seven locks um, of hair in the loom, um, they're going to represent that history. 
And then we're going to have the hair being cut. And that's going to be some other date after December 25th, 2021. I don't know what date it is yet. We haven't looked at that. Okay. Now, is this making sense to people, what we're doing here? Because uh, one of the things that we're going to be doing in uh, the camp meeting presentations that I'm going to be doing is, is, is clearly showing how we can construct these lines. And we're, we're much better at it than we were in the past. That is, we, we, we have the tools. We know how to use these symbols. We've used them again and again. And I want people to be able to see that this is not something that's arbitrary. That is, if other people had drawn out these lines um, without, you know, me doing it, I think that we would have come to the same conclusions or at least something close. Like there might be little details that we've missed or different people would notice. Um, but we noticed even when we went through lines again, that we would notice something and it would correct our understanding of those lines. And in a sense, we're doing that right now. This is, is sort of a correction. We had worked through Samson. And, and I think in some ways we had mixed different lines together so, so this is, is clear. Now, if we're going to deal with the darkness, um, you know, what, what verses are we going to use to address the darkness? What is the darkness? What is, what is the message? And, and that's an important part of it. So we know that we're going to be starting with uh, these verses. So I'm going to steal this here and put it down here. So when we deal with the widths, um, so let's go over there and look at this, these verses then. So it's going to be at 16 verse four. Now, you know, I put it there at the beginning, but really in a sense, the widths is this entire first message, right? Um, so this starts with the story of Delilah and you can see Delilah is July 18, right? So the other thing about that is we have a symbol of the July, uh, July 18, which is Delilah. It's going to be introduced right here at the beginning of this story. And it's going to be that she lives in the Valley of Sorek, and it's going to give us this 525 symbol. And so that's why we're starting on July 18, 2020, at the beginning of the 525 days. Right? So, so in this story, so I'm going to go back here. I'll just show you what I'm going to do. Uh, so, so I put it here that, you know, this is the widths, the, the bowstrings. But I'm just going to put it like this. That's going to be this first angel's message. The new ropes will be the second angel's message. And then the third angel's message is going to be uh, this. So we'll, we'll work this out and how we lay this out. But Because it doesn't start with the widths. It starts with uh, 16 verse 4. So 16 verse 4 gives us this way mark. That's going to be Delilah um, 187 and the 525. So 1870, 1807, so 18th of July. Okay. Yeah, so we have the seven locks of hair, the seven way marks, woven fabric, tapestry, the history overseen by God that uh, Ellen White wrote about. His behind the scenes guidance in it could be, could the bowstrings have something to do with Islam and 9-11? Okay, so... We marked July 18 initially, right? I mean, I guess when I presented July 18, the first time I presented it as a date, July 18, 2020, I had first presented it in connection with Ezekiel's prophecy. And it was July 18, 2020 on the Julian calendar. So it was actually July 31st. And then... Um, I was shown 
July 18, 2020. And this was partly Stephen uh, working out, trying to look at the span of uh, um, 180 years. So from 1840 to 2020. So that's the, the half, a, half a, a month is now, it's going to be half a year, half a day per year, 180 years. And then I worked it out with the symbol of the 26th day of the fourth month and the 26th day of the fourth month fell on July 18, Gregorian. And it was the uh, 10th day of the fifth month that fell on July 18, Julian in 2020. And, and there's all these remarkable uh, reasons why this this was done. So, um, and all the witnesses of that, the, the Mayan calendar dates and everything. It was just amazingly providential. So the point is we have here, Islam is what we marked at July 18, 2020. And we know that the arrows, these are representative symbols of many things, but one of the things is Islam. So these widths, now these are bowstrings, but I, I just like the word widths there. Um, and these are 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 not dried, or not are, are yes, they're not dried. We'll put it that way, dried. Whatever that means, them not being dried. So they're spell the word dried. So, Like that? Okay. <clears throat> and so I'm just going to take these as these spans. So this is going to be this first angel's message. That is, in our movement, there is a message after July 18 that is going to test this movement. So we, we have the symbols here. We don't have the dates. We don't know what the message is yet. Uh, in this line. Okay. So we got these seven widths. Um, they're bowstrings that are not dried. It's kind of interesting symbol. And we're going to say that that relates to Islam. But we don't know what date we have here for the second angel arriving yet. We're just saying July 18th is what the symbols show us here. That This must be the start of this whole line. Um, now, it could be that it's just the start of the first message, but I, I doubt it. It seems to me more logical to make it a part of the whole line as being 525. So we have July 18th, we have this introduction of uh, Delilah. So these, these symbols we're going to place there. We can see that. Uh, I could probably just type in um, so that symbol of the choice vine. What would that symbolize? What's a what's a vine symbolized in scripture? It does symbolize, you know, doctrine, but primarily if we talk about a choice vine, would not that be God's people? Yes. Yes, I think so. Okay. So we can see that this is God's people. Um, and I probably should put this up here. But this is choice vine. So this is this movement. It's been selected, right? It's been chosen uh, to be a, a peculiar people, to show forth the praises of his glory, right? This is a movement that is, is to give a message to the world. And... Samson, of course, was to do this. This was his work. He typifies Christ. He was supposed to conquer the Philistines. 
which he does, but uh, and he becomes a judge. But he has some problems, and um, and these problems, uh, even though he's the type of Christ, they symbolize the character defects that we have, uh, the passions, the, the things that are revealed in our character to us that need to be overcome. And so this is a choice line. This is this movement is being chosen. So Samson and Delilah, their relationship is in this Valley of Sorek, this choice line. And these are messages. So we know the message of July 18th, specifically because Delilah has that name, July 18th. But her name means uh, feeble, right? Um, you know, it, it's related to the word of... Um, to be slack and or be fee feeble, so to be slack. But it also can mean to be oppressed, bring low, dry up, be empty, be not equal, fail, be impoverished, be made thin, right? Um, Strong's itself, uh, because that was Brown Drivers Briggs, the first one, just feeble. Uh, Brown Drivers Briggs uh, says feeble. And uh, Strong's actually says languishing, right? So it has... Now, what's, what's the word languish? What does it mean that some, something is languishing? Oh, I was always thought it meant, meant the lack of hope, and you lose hope, and you're just dragging around the way I often feel, like <laughs> chronic fatigue. Yes. So, the th so the thing about words is, you know, they have lots of different meanings, right? So when we think of languishing, um, you know, we could – and Angela says being without hope, you know, I sort of think of it as like a fading flower. Um, but the idea of languish, and especially if we try to look at older definitions, I mean, it means to lose strength. That's where we get the feeble from, um, to become a dull, uh, feeble or spiritless, to pine, to be or to grow heavy, uh, to languish under disease, or after excessive exertion, uh, to wither, to fade. That's where I think of it as languishing fat flowers, fading flowers, withering flowers, to lose the vegetating power, um, to grow dull, be no longer active and vigorous. Um, here it gives an example. This is Webster's uh, 18, whatever it is, 1828 or something dictionary. Um, the war languished for want of supplies. Commerce, agriculture, manufacturers languish, not for want of money, but for want of good markets, uh, to pine or sink under sorrow, to look with softness or tenderness, to cause to droop or pine, uh, right? So you can see that this word uh, would be representing this movement, this choice vine. So if you think about a choice vine in a valley, right, this choice vine, but it's languishing, right? And this is referring to this movement, right? That's the way that I understand it. That's how we've been applying uh, this line, this story in Judges, this line of Judges, referring to this movement. So this movement has, uh, has languished. And we can definitely see that from July 18, 2020. The movement has grown weak. It's feeble. And so these messages, um, these are messages that test us. And, and Samson, I mean, on the story on the surface, he's supposed to conquer the one that conquers the Philistines. But he has this moral problem. Uh, and even though he's the type of Christ. But here in this, when we take these stories, we can see that this is something that is testing us. And, and who's testing us here? It's, it's Delilah. It's July 18. And so somehow when we look at this line, we look at this first message, especially we have this issue with these seven widths. And somehow this line is going to have to be drawn out. Um, and I don't have an idea yet. We're going to have an increase of knowledge, but we don't know what the darkness is yet. So we're going to say that uh, 
In July 18th, the church is languishing. So there is a darkness. Now, it's not the wife is barren because that's the other story. So, so here we have to describe what this darkness is prior to July 18. And based upon these stories, right? So, so we're going to come back to that. Um, so then, so the widths are, are covering this and we're going to read through these verses. So we'll go back there. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, entice him and see wherein his great strength lieth. And by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him. And we will give thee every one of us 1,100 pieces of silver. And Delilah said said to Samson, tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. Now, we have here 1,100, but one of the things we see um, uh, in this 1,100 is, um, so we see it in chapter 7. We can see that if there's five uh, lords of the Philistines, which we understand that there are, and all of them together are going to give them uh, 1,100 pieces of silver, each of them are giving 220 pieces of silver. So that's that's what we would understand from this. That's that's how we what we concluded. And um, oh, what was the other point here? There was another. Uh, oh, um, and and just sort of in support of that. Uh, no, it says here. Um, because part of the problem that we have here, so we have Natan give, not, so every man we will give, uh, uh, we ourselves are going to give every one, right? Every one of us, it says. So it says every one of us, the of us. Um, now here it's, it puts this word of us, but it doesn't show a Hebrew word that gives the of us, right? So if I look at this verse and I go to the Hebrew, I know you can't read Hebrew here, but um, so it's going to be here, this uh, we ourselves, Akinu, Natan, that's just like Nathan, 5414. And then it's going to have, uh, this word that they don't even have a Hebrew number for it, right? Now, it probably is just uh, attached to the word ish. So the word ish is man, right? That's 376. So it says Aleph, Yod, Shin, Ish. And then they have this uh, Lach. So this looks like, if I'm correct, this is a Lamed with a final Kaf. So they don't represent it here. And um, now I think it means to us. So because uh, this final cough is just means us and the lamed means to. So this really should be to us man. And and so it's kind of weird because usually you would have from, right, from us. But it's just saying um, we're going to give. Uh, to us, to each man, or, or to to the man of us. So, so the word each doesn't actually exist here. And then it's just going to give this word um, Aleph and uh, Mia, which is just 100. And then it's going to give this word for silver, which is Kesef, right? So it's going to, so the Aleph is the 11, uh, Aleph it has here. Elif, a hundred, and silver, right? Kesef. So, so we can see the way that I read this is that this is we 
are giving you 1,100 pieces of silver. The, the men of us, us five men, it's going to be five, right? So that's why I'm arguing it's 220. Okay. I have no idea why they didn't put the Hebrew number for uh, uh, to us. But anyway, <clears throat> does that help a little bit in understanding uh, the symbolism here that the five times 220? So if we're going to take that symbol, this is the symbol of restoration, but it's also the number five. And, and try to ignore the, you know, the moral aspects of the story. How would we take this symbol of verse five? Where would we place it? Um, is it is it part of the formalization of the message? Right, because we're going to have it in verse six. And Delilah said to Samson, "Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth." And and this is going to be the story of what ends up happening. I would take this all as being the empowerment of the first message. Right. Um, and we're going to also have the mocking here. Right. So wherever we're going to place that. Um, and then we're going to have, so that's going to be, I think the the second angel arriving is in this, this part here. So I'm going to say that um, seven to nine is going to be the empowerment of the first message and five and six is going to be the formalization of the message. And we haven't given a date for it for these events yet. But we're going to say here, uh, this is going to be... Um, Sixteen verse five and six. And this is going to be five times two twenty equals eleven hundred. So I have to move this bit. So what is that symbol? If we're placing this symbol here at uh, the formalization of the message, the first message, what, what way mark is this? Like, what is this in Millerite history? And how would this... Would it be 18, 16, 18, 18? Okay. Would you want to put it as the increase of knowledge rather than the formalization? Because normally we, we have the formalization as... Um, so 1833. Maybe, yeah, 1833. So... Um, Okay, so why would you, could, could we put verse five there at as the increase of knowledge? Is that what you would do? Because okay, maybe that's what we should do. So we're going to get rid of verse six here, and we're going to put this as this increase of knowledge. Does that sound good, Stephen? I'm not sure. Well, okay. Well, what was your reasons for putting it as the um, 1816 to 1818? Well, I was thinking by 1818, he basically had his message. Yep, so he has a message because that's the increase of knowledge. So he has the message, he, he, and then we have the formalization of that message. So here in this, this is the Philistines requesting of Delilah 
to find out where in uh, Samson's great strength lies. Um, but is there any symbols here that can tie us to 1816 to 1818? I mean, we know the going forth of the virgins, right? We got the five. So we can say that's the first message. Um, it's a message of restoration. What particularly the, the 1100 is by itself I mean, it has the number 11 in it, which is a symbol um, on its own. But I do like it as the increase of knowledge. But I'm still not sure if I understand the line yet. Right, so that we understand it yet. I don't know if I understand it, so maybe you guys do. But when we look at this 616, we see FFA, right? And 616 is where she's then going to speak to Samson. So the speaking of Delilah would be the formalization, right? So Delilah says to Samson, tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth. And if you think about this, Delilah means feeble and Samson is strong, right? We have this. So there is something that happens in our movement after July 18th that addresses FFA and is a formalization of a message. So we don't know what the message is yet, particularly. Um, but could we place this as December, for instance, just December, uh, December 6th, uh, 2020. I don't know what I did there. Okay. December 6th, 2020. Does that make sense? Because, and if we put that as a formalization of a message, what does that mean? Is that possible? Or is there some other speaking formalized? No, it's, possible. It, it's possible. Okay, it's possible, right? So we don't know yet because we don't we haven't constructed this line. We're just looking at this. But, but what, if, see, what? what if what if this formalization of the message is the understanding that we're basing the message on chronology and time as a symbol rather than time as a construct. Okay. Um, and that's really what comes clear in December 6th. Right. Now, I know that, you know, it's, it's unfair to other people a little bit just because of where I sit in relationship to FFA and what I understood prior to July 18. So I understood that the numbers were symbolic. I understood that the lines related to the movement. I didn't believe that we could predict the events that Ellen White talked about. I was clear through, through that whole time. But I wasn't being listened to by FFA. That is, they really believed that I was time setting after July 18. And the paper that I wrote that really clarified that, they ignored. Everything that I said, they ignored. You know, and I've been, always been trying to understand why people do that, you know, why people can't just take a communication for what it is. And, and the only thing I can say is that people often state things that they don't really mean because they have a strategy. And they assume everybody else is doing that. But if you're straightforward and honest, it's the only only way to be. Um, you're going to expect other people to be straightforward and honest, which is is a problem when you're straightforward and honest. You expect that of other people. 
And so it's confusing. You're, you're not strategizing. And this is the problem that, that, that we had there. Because, you know, if I had, and I'm not saying I should have strategized, but I'm saying if I had been aware of what they were doing, I might have acted differently. But the thing is, I can't act differently. I have to act straightforward and honestly. Um, I don't want to manipulate a situation. So when we get there, I mean, I'm always surprised at what ends up happening. I'm always surprised at the reaction. It didn't make any sense to me for them to make that declaration and make their claims and claiming that I was believing certain things that I wasn't believing that didn't make any sense to me still doesn't except to understand that that's that they believed I wasn't honest. And the only way that people believe that other people aren't honest for the most part, you know, at least naturally is if you're dishonest, you believe other people are dishonest. And if you're honest, you believe other people are honest. It's just the way it is. So it's very hard for me to recognize what people are doing. And, and so when we get there, I understand what, what I had said, but it's completely misrepresented. So FFA is going to reject this, um, this understanding that, that God had given us regarding the symbolic use of, of chronology. The chronology here is symbolic because that's how we've been applying it. We're not predicting events. We don't know what's coming in the future on such and such a date, but we can look at what's happened and we can look at dates in the future, which are symbols. And they sometimes do yield events, events, symbolic events, but they all relate to this movement and this movement is symbolic, right? This movement is typifying something that's going to happen within Adventism. And so when we look back and we look at Parminder, and that's what this whole line of the judges is, is it showing this movement of how it's typifying what's going to happen to the church. And so we're in a, a part of this line, which is the Sunday law. This movement is representing um, you know, what Adventism is going to do. Now, we believe that we also have a purpose in it so that the things that we experience can benefit us in giving a message to the Adventist church so that the Adventist church can give a message to the world. But unlike Tabo and Parminder and Tess and these others who are looking for self-exaltation, somehow they're going to be in charge of this church that's going to you know, call people out of Adventism. We just believe we have a small part to play in a bigger uh, plan of God and that we, we don't fully understand how God is working. That is, there may be many, many different groups like ours that God is using in different ways to accomplish his purpose. That's my belief. I don't believe this is the movement. This is a movement. It's part of a bigger movement that God is in control of. But this is the part that we are in. And so this is where we have to learn the lessons that God has given us. So when we look at these seven widths, these bowstrings, so seven is a symbol of completeness. completeness. It symbolizes the way marks, right? So one of the things that we have to see is that these seven widths must represent way marks on a line. And is a bowstring not a line? That's a, that's a very interesting application. And yes, it can be. And it's not dried. So it's still wet. It hasn't set yet. It hasn't cured. And this is this present experience. It's a green experience. Yeah, and so Stephen uh, puts here, you know, not dried, not been dried, the latter rain. That is, the Holy Spirit is working here, right? So this is this is showing something actively that we're a part of, where the Holy Spirit is working. And we know since July 18th, the Holy Spirit has been working in this movement. But we've also seen the feebleness of this movement since July 18th. We've seen the feebleness in ourselves as individuals. We've come face to face with 
our character defects, and we are seeking to overcome because we believe that God's people need to come into unity, and we definitely are not in unity. So we have this formalization of the message, and it's it's this conflict that exists on December 6, 2020. Now, um, so when we go back to the verses, um, we're going to have this section where this is going to happen, right? So, so Samson's first going to respond. He says, you need to bind me with seven widths, right, that have not been dried. So that's really where you're going to get the seven widths itself. And um, this is an empowerment of a message. So they're, they're uh, seven green widths. Now, this word green, um, uh, hang on. moist, fresh, new, it could refer to plants or to cords or sinews, right? But no one, I don't know anybody has green sinews, but um, it's the idea of new, something that's that's new or fresh. And um, the Hebrew number 3892. So, so we haven't looked at the Hebrew numbers of, of these words to see what they mean. Uh, the seven, of course, we can see it's, 7651, that's Sheba, right? So this refer can also refer to the seven times as a symbol. But primarily here, I believe it's the seven way marks. And uh, so they're green widths, and the width is the word yether, um, which is a rope, right? So a small rope. And uh, so these numbers, there's different ways that we can look at the number. We can look at it as, you know, a span of time. Uh, sometimes we do that. Um, you know, sometimes it's uh, uh, the symbol of the numbers itself, what its divisors are. Uh, if it's a prime number, sometimes it's an interesting uh, prime number. Uh, here we have um, these, so we have two, we have, 3892. So 3892 as a number. I haven't looked this one up yet. Um, so just as a symbol as a number, well, I'll show you here. Um, you can see it's um, 2 times 2 times 7 times 139. Now, 139 is related to 391. Um, but, you know, there isn't really a lot of particular qualities that I see here in this number itself as a symbol other than the, the one, three, nine, and the seven. So those would be the, the divisors. You can see uh, lots of different divisors, but none of them that I recognize as major symbols. You, know, you can look at the octal or the duodecimal, nothing there that jumps out at me. Um, and then the other number, so that was the green or the undried. And, and the other one is 3499. So 3499 is a prime number, the 489th prime number. So prime numbers are always interesting. Um, now, one thing you see about the 489th is it's one short of the 490th. Right? So does that relate to, this, to the, uh, uh, the 70 weeks, even though it's one short? Can we connect it in some way to that? It's almost complete. It's almost completely. Now, Angela put a bunch of verses there. Um, Angela, what are those verses about? There, there are two, two that's springing forth. Okay. So, so, so new things springing forth. Okay. But should we see that 489 is almost 490? And so that's it's almost complete. Something is complete. It's short. It's falling short. 
of the 70 weeks. Does that make sense to people? It's an interesting point. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it's just, I mean, when I look at 489 at the 489th prime, that to me would uh, would remind me of the 490, 490 years. <clears throat> okay, so those are the things that we can do with those numbers. So, so we're going to take the width here itself. So this is going to be... Um, I'm going to switch screens here. Just hang on. So this is going to be 16 verse 7 to, um, I'm just going to take this whole story, uh, 7 to, um, seven to nine as the empowerment. So Samson's going to give her the answer. Uh, well, it's a false answer, but he's going to answer her complaint or her pleading, and and it's going to be the empowerment of of a message. Now we know this is a message we say was related to the message given to about Islam. Um, but we're going to have to have something uh, that connects this line to this formalization to some event in this movement or related to this movement symbolically, an external event even, uh, that addresses this. Now, I would place here... Um, Uh, let me do it this way. So we got 16 verse 7 to 9. And what I want to put here is uh, okay. So what did I put there? And I'm gonna I'm gonna put 616. So what is this? We'll do it this, this way. Uh, I don't know. I hate that we switch months and things around, but I'm, I'm going to put this as the first month or the, pardon me, the 16th day. I'll put it the first month, 16th day. First month, 16th day, 20. So what is that date? And I'm relating it to this 616. 16th day of the first month is first fruits. Okay, it's first fruits. So, so we have a symbol there, first fruits. But I'm marking the 16th day of January in 2020. That's going to be the end of the 10 days of prayer. And that's going to be the 616th day or 616 days from, from the start of November 9th, 2019, that's going to end in 777 days, right? Now, technically, from this date, it's going to be um, uh, 161 days to, so that's why I wanted to do it this way. I want to do the date this way. 16th day of the first month, because it's going to be here. I'm going to copy this. Um, from here to here, to December 25th, which I'm putting as the third angel arriving here, right? It's going to be um, 616 days to this date. Or 
161 days, what am I saying? 161 days. That is from November 9th, 2019, it's 616 days to January 16th, 2020. And then it's 161 days to December 25th, 2021. But now if we're placing this as the end of the 10 days of prayer, um, we're answering something that this is an empowerment of a message that we have marked that is formalized, as Dwight had said, is about the use, the symbolic use of numbers, which is going to be rejected by FFA. So we know that that's the message that we give. And, and we're going to have this date, which we have on other lines, um, the 16th day of January. It's the end of the 10 days of prayer. So it starts on January 6th, the 10 days of prayer, and ends at January 16th. So it's technically actually 11 days if you counted the whole thing, but they call it 10 days of prayer. Is this making sense to people? What what we've done here? I think your count. I think your count is wrong there because you're going from the, from the, almost almost the beginning of, of twenty to almost the end of twenty. That can't be one hundred and sixty one days. It's got to be more than that. That's about 10, 10 or eleven months more. Okay. So what am I doing? Oh, that's twenty twenty one. Pardon me. There you go. Oh okay. yeah, that's okay, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> yes. Well, my bad. I mean. Obviously, I made a typo there. Yeah, so because that we're going to have January 6, 2021, that's going to be the siege of Jerusalem. Or siege of Washington, pardon me. But you understand yeah. what I'm saying. It's Jerusalem as a symbol. And then 10 days later, the 10 days of prayer ends. And that's going to be marking this structure that we had related to the 525. Because remember... We can divide 777 as 525 and 252, uh, 433 and 343, right? 434 and 343, yeah. And as 616 and 161, right? So it's it's natural here in this 525 days to look at that 525 and to look at the 161, right? To me, it makes sense. And, and we're taking um, uh, this, this date because this date is an empowerment of the symbolic use of numbers. Now, related to that is, of course, December 25th, uh, 2020, right, the bombing of Nashville. And then what happened on January 6th, the symbols attached to that. And then the 10 days later. So I'm marking the 10 days here. But really... This is that whole history of, of that, right? So, I mean, we could put 10 days in there. We could put from, you know, the 10 days of prayer. And, and we remember that from July 18, uh, 2020, I mean, we're going to have other things that are going to occur, right? So, um so when we go into 2020 and we go to July 18 and we count um, 187 days, remember, we're also going to have uh, that FFA is going to be sold, right? So it's going to be sold on January 21st, right? I think that's the right date. Is it January 21st that it's sold? It's 187 days after July 18. Yeah. And and so it's it's sold. So we could put that whole history. We could just say, well, from January 6th to January 21st is that first angel being empowered. It's where these symbolic dates, we could even, I guess, even go back to December 25th. So that's going to be 187 days uh, from uh the, the the Tennessean, right? And then you're going to have 187 days um, uh, sold 187 days after July 18 and listed 187 days before July 18 the, pre the next year, right? And 
Angela has one twenty one twenty one a mere date, right? So, but the point is, we have three different periods of one hundred and eighty seven days, right? We have from June twenty second to December twenty fifth. We have from uh, July. Um, let me see. I'm, I'm trying to remember this here. The, June twenty second. Uh, then we have July eighteen to um, oh, and then we have July fourth. So July fourth, the end of the hundred days of prayer to January sixth, and then from July eighteen, one hundred eighty seven days to when they sold the school of the prophets. Right. So, so in that grouping, I'm just saying that we're grouping those events. December 25th, January 6th, January 16th, and January 21st as all dates that represent the 187, right? So this is, this, and this is this line of Delilah, right? We have Samson and Delilah, and Delilah has this first message, this first test with the seven widths, the way marks, on a line, the bowstrings that are not dried, they're, they're green, they have the Holy Spirit, right? That is the message that's being represented here. So then when we look at the new ropes, um, uh, that's going to be um, starting on verse 10. There's going to be this mocking. So it's first going to start with the mocking. And we know the marking, mocking is April 19th, 1844. So that's the second angel arrives there. Um, so there is the mocking here. So we're, we're going to have to figure out a date, though, that that is. Um, so we know that somewhere in this line, a second message arrives. And that's going to be the mocking. Now, to me... We would also see we're coming to, we're saying here, December 25th, 2021. Now, maybe there's something wrong about this line because this line could have something else in it. That is, we could, um, you know, we could have the, we could have December 25th, 2021 over here in the 5 2021 day, 525 days being just the first message and the 161 days here. But then that we, we means we would have to have, um, uh, if this is December 25th, 2021, we would have to have a span of time and the third angel's coming over here. I, I don't know if we're going to finish this line because I know there's, there's different ways we can look at it. Um, well, yes, but when we're talking about the mocking, so the mocking that happened on July 19th, but I'm not talking about that mocking. There's a mocking that happens within the movement that is uh, is the problem that is that that I believe that's being addressed here, because who's being tested in this first message? Those that accepted July 18, right? And they're going to have this this powerful witness about this message. So we know that the mocking has to happen somewhere in this line and and that that's going to be the second angel arriving that's where the mocking is samuel snow uh writes about this in on, on in his may 1st letter in the signs of the times in heim signs of the times in 1844 talks about the mockers right that letter we don't normally count as part of his letters because he's not addressing uh the prediction before midnight. It's not one of his prediction before midnight letters, but it's the day before his May 2nd letter, which is Pentecost or Pentecost Passover. So it's going to be the day before Passover that we have that, that mocking marked. Um, but he's marking it as what happened on April 19th. Okay. So, so Ran wrote, um, about 4,109 days from uh, November 7th, 51, and uh, February 6th, 63. So, Aran, you have to explain what that is. What's the 4,109? 4, 
just another 419 reference. Oh, okay. So you're saying it's April 14th. Now, now what you're looking at there is that's Jeff's birthday and my birthday. So that means Jeff was 4,109 days older than me, or still is, right? <clears throat> okay. Uh, how would that relate then to this line right now? I don't know. I just heard you talking about April 19th. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, yeah. Okay. And yeah. So it's um, uh, 11 years and 91 days apart. I don't know if that helps, at least in, in any way. I don't know how we would relate it to this symbol other than we can see that April 19th in our lines is 9-11, right? So, um, so I don't know. Uh, so we're gonna have a mocking that happens here. Or we're gonna have a new, a second message arrive. Um, so the first message is this symbolic use of numbers. And then we have a second message that you have to accept the first in order to accept this second. Now, we could place this mocking um, because when I think about the mocking, uh, we have a particular date uh, prior to December 25th, 2021. And that's going to be the presentation. I always forget the date, but it's the presentation at um, uh, with um, the American group. But I don't know if that's that's what we're going to place there. But we could, right? We could place that presentation. Um, I'll find it. Uh, I think it was October second, uh, twenty twenty one. So I'm pretty sure it's October 2nd. So I can put that in there. So if we go here, we're going to go. Now maybe there's something that's before that. But, you know, if we put that as an arrival of a second message, we have to then really define what that message is. And, and this looks a little bit more provocative. I mean, we're, we're putting here um, what happened to, with FFA in this rejection of this message and this empowerment then, that this is going to be ignored by the people in this movement. Now, I still don't fully understand October 2nd, 2021. I know we're, we're running out of time here, so we're not going to finish this line today. Um, but October 2nd, 2021 is this, to me, it's an inexplicable confrontation. One is, you know, I'm joining in, in this study with, uh, uh, the American group. I'm, I'm supposed to be presenting in the afternoon. Um, I think it's Hebrews eight or something like that. And, and I did present, but in the morning meeting, there was this, this odd tension and and I had a, an apprehension of this uh, prior to the study, and I prayed uh, quite earnestly about you know being a part of this study because um, I just knew that something was going to happen, but I didn't know what, and I definitely wasn't trying to make anything happen because I was completely caught off guard, even though I was prepared. If that makes sense. But one is it it was that um, there seemed to be attention with me and brother Fontenot and I, I didn't know what was going on it just didn't make sense his reaction to things that I was saying and and he sort of accused me of of rejecting the idea that the Catholic Church is you know that the Jesuits are important or something I, I don't I don't understand what I said and why he reacted that way and then what ended up happening is the confrontation with Mark Johnson and where he was presenting these uh, 
these ideas that we could be transhuman, which transhumanism is, is the idea that we become more than human. Uh, we, you know, we go to the next stage of evolution and that the, the vaccines were going to make us, you know, go to the next stage of evolution. And it didn't really make any sense. Um, but anyway, it, it ended up me getting banned from the American group. So the, the next week when, when I was supposed to, the next time I was supposed to present again, two weeks from then, uh, they didn't want me to present again in the American group. So I was basically banned. Um, and uh, so if we're marking October 2nd as that, I mean, what is the message that's arriving? And how do we address this with the new ropes? So that would be the problem. If we're doing this correctly, it should fit together. We shouldn't have a huge struggle with that. Okay. So, so I know the first part is, is very solid, but I don't know what we're doing with the second part. So, um, so 1610, we read about that um, she claims that he's mocking her. And he said unto her, if they bind me fast with new ropes that never were occupied, then I shall be weak and be as another man, right? Or as any other man, right? Uh, Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith and said unto him, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait abiding in the chamber, and he brake them from off his arms like a thread. So, so these this verse here, verses 10, 11, and 12. Um, what are the symbols here? Uh, again, you're going to have new but you're going to have a different word, you know, so, um, or undried or green, right? So new ropes. Ropes is a word, um, abotha, or aboth, something entwined. So we see these, this entwining here. Um, and uh, new kadash. Um, ever were occupied. So, and Alaka. But, and it's kind of interesting here, because um, you see in this word, uh, never were occupied, but it, it's two different Hebrew words. Uh, properly, it means deputyship, that is, ministry, generally employment, never servile, or work abstractly or concretely. Also properly as a result of laser business. Um, so occupation. So so that they were never used in an occupation, I guess, is the why they use occupied. They've never been used. They've never been employed. Right. But right away, you can see the word malaka is, is related to the word malak or king, which has to do with, um, you know, a position of power, right? Um, and then I shall be weak, right? So you're going to have this word atala, properly to be rubbed, worn, to be weak, sick, afflicted, and be as another man. And then Delilah takes these new ropes and bound him therewith, 631 Asar, and said unto him, the Philistines would be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait abiding in the chamber and break them from off his arms like a thread. So they're going to be a chut. Uh, so just that's a piece of string or a thread, a fine line. <clears throat> so we're, we've run out of time, basically. But if we look here, we, ha we have some symbols. But, you know, we have to decide how we're going to imply them. So what are these ropes? that are not occupied, how does that relate to uh, these dates that we have? So we have the October 2nd date. Um, and, and so what's progressing here in my understanding of this? 
if we're going to take the second angel's message as starting on October 2nd, with the third angel arriving December 25th, 2021. So that's in that three, um, October, November, December, the three months uh, period, uh, we're saying that that is a second message that comes to this movement, if, the, if we're doing this line correctly. And, and we may not, we may have to uh, place this somewhere else. We might be zooming into part of another line. So that's part of the problem sometimes when we construct these lines is normally we have those dates and they're sort of a zoom into December 25th, 2021. They're leading up to that. Um, but when I look at the new ropes, the thing that's going to uh, bind Samson is it's this entwining, right, these ropes. And, and what I see in that symbol is sort of uh, the subterfuge that is going on within the movement to undermine uh, uh, the message of the symbolic use of numbers. And so when we look at October 2nd to December 25th, that, uh, that period of time there in the movement, so it's whatever, 80 some days, I don't, I don't know how many days it is. Um, I think it's 80, 80 some, might be 70, 70 something. Anyway, it's around 80 days, more or less. Um, when we get to December 25th, 2021, what happened on October 2nd definitely results in what happens on December 25th. That is, if that confrontation never occurred, uh, Angela has a little pun there, a training and an intro uh, as in a showing an employee the new ropes. Um, yeah, so that, that would be a, an interesting observation there. So, so one of the things that happens is the movement takes a turn there with um, me as a person coming out of favor with the American and Canadian group. And it leads to the point that when this light comes to this movement, the third angel arrives, that we're not united in studying the light, that, that there becomes this division. So I mean, it doesn't really become evident to me that there's any problem until October 2nd, 2021. Uh, but it definitely, in that period of time, those few months, uh, when we get to December 2015, we have the next confrontation. Um, uh, so that's the seven locks in a loom, right, that's going to be addressed there. So I think all we can do tomorrow is we, we can finish off this line and just um, show those, uh, the story of Samson, we can show the seven way marks from the, the four chapters. But we're going to go through all this again in the camp meeting, but it's going to be simpler, right? I mean, simpler in a sense, but more concise and compacted. So if somebody somebody's going to be studying it for the first time, they're going to have to take a while to go through the studies and understand what's being presented. But the Holy Spirit can teach people. Um, my, my brother was here for uh, a day. He was here Sunday and I flew him to the airport or flew him, drove him to the airport um, yesterday morning. And I, I presented to him much of this message which I, he's studied. I mean, he's read some of my papers and so forth. Um, but he's, you know, he's he has learning disabilities. He's always struggled reading. He had to have speech therapy when he was a kid. Um, but he can understand truth. He can understand these things, even though he has these deficiencies. And when people say it's too hard, it's too difficult, the one thing I know from looking at my brother, is it's true, it's hard, it's difficult, but you got to buckle down. Now, he got uh, remarried in uh, 2018, the end of 2018, and um, 
Uh, the reason why this woman married him is they worked together at the same same place, uh, same nursing home. Um, but she saw every time he was working, when he wasn't working, like he would just hang around work, he was reading the Bible or studying the spirit of prophecy. And, you know, I wish I was as diligent as my brother was in studying uh, when I was younger. Because he had to study. When he became an Adventist, he read an hour a day spirit of prophecy. And he struggled to read. But he made sure he understood what he was reading. And we can easily just read, you know, a devotional and think that we've studied and, and not even understand what we've read. So there's no excuse uh, for ignorance in God's word. There's no excuse for somebody saying something's too hard. I understand things can be very, very hard. But that is the path that God has given each one of us. It's a battle and a march. It's not an easy thing. It's not given to us on a platter. And if it if it is, it's never appreciated. Something that's not earned through, through uh, tears and labor it is never valued. So... Anyway, uh, we'll come back to this tomorrow morning. But for now, let's close with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask for your Holy Spirit to be here um, throughout this day as we continue to look at these things. And um, we pray, Lord, that uh, you can um, be with us in the study tomorrow and the camp meeting coming up. We need your help in all things and um, help us to trust in you. Be with us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.